This is a presentation from the Apollo Gaia project, which was set up to look at two fundamental questions. The one we have already addressed, and that is the amplification of the human intervention in climate change that the Earth system provides. In this presentation, we look at the question of the conditions of a potential runaway episode in the global climate. So we're calling it beyond the stable state, boundary conditions of self-amplification, or in common parlance, runaway behavior in the global climate system. Now, there are many ways of approaching this, but one of them is to tell a story. And what I'm going to do this afternoon is to tell you a story. And it's about the runaway car. Before I actually do that, I want to give you the reason why this is so important. All the work on measuring the Earth system sensitivity has been based on historical data. And that data, all that information, comes from times in the Earth's past when climate changed extremely slowly and it only just went out of equilibrium so that the in the technical terms we would say it's slow change close to equilibrium change. Today what we are doing to the climate on planet Earth is changing it about 300 times faster than it has ever changed in all the history of planet Earth. Extraordinary. And under those conditions, new feedback processes are brought into play that increase the capacity of the Earth system to multiply or amplify the effects of carbon dioxide release that we have, that we have actually contributed. And there's a very real danger under these conditions that not only do we have high temperature outputs, but that we set off a process of runaway behaviour. So here's the Apollo Gaia parable. It's the parable of the runaway car. Yes, this is a very powerful dragster car from the States. Forgive me for using it. But you're going to sit at the driving, in the driving seat of this car. It's an automatic, and uh, it does things that you're not expecting. It's a, an imaginary car. You go under an unlimited straight road and you find that you accelerated to about 50 miles an hour, shall we say, and something awful happened. It got stuck in gear, it wouldn't change. The accelerator pedal stuck in full on and you couldn't turn the engine off. What options do you have? Well, obviously and instinctively, you go straight for the brake pedal, don't you? And put the brakes on as hard as you possibly can. So the question is, what happens to the runaway car? Well, if the power being delivered to the wheels by the accelerator is less than the braking force applied to the same wheels from the braking system, then you will have a negative acceleration. You will slow the car speed down and it will eventually come to rest in a given distance. Ah, and you can get out. However, suppose the power being delivered by the accelerator system is a bit greater, still less than the braking power being delivered through the braking system, you will take longer to come to a standstill because the deceleration will be less. Now comes the critical point. Suppose the power of acceleration is exactly the same as the braking power being applied to those wheels. Then you neither accelerate nor decelerate. You go on forever and ever and ever at 50 miles an hour until something else happens like the brakes burn out or you run out of petrol, or road, or something. And then, beyond that critical threshold, suppose the power being delivered to the wheels from the accelerator system is greater than the braking power being delivered through the braking system. Then you will slowly accelerate, and you will get faster and faster, and the further you go, the faster you will be going. And if 
the accelerator system is even more powerful, you will get faster, faster. The rate of acceleration will increase. And the runaway car goes over the hill and the old 60s sound will be appropriate. Now that is a parable for runaway change. In this sense, that if the feedback power of positive acceleration in the Earth system is a little less powerful than the damping system of negative feedback, then the Earth's climate will come to some new equilibrium, the given degrees are great, greater than it is now. If the feedback process delivers just the same amount of increase for a degree change in temperature as the braking system does, the damping system, then we get a prolonged period of linear climate change. But if the feedback process is stronger in its amplification ability than the braking system in its damping ability, then you move across the threshold, across that critical tipping point, into a temporary period of runaway change in which the faster the change happens, the stronger the change becomes. And we appear to be in a situation where that is a very real possibility. In rapid change, in far from equilibrium conditions, in a sensitivity in the Earth system that is very high, and that threatens to overwhelm the negative or damping, decelerating power of the Earth's climate. If that happens, we have a catastrophe, a catastrophe on our hands of an order far greater in magnitude than anything we have addressed in climate change so far. Thank you very much.